Bitch, I'm back. I'm popular the man. Hi, it's Sun. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to my channel. I am back. It's been a little while, but I'm here. I had to take a break for my mind to get some shit aligned and shit's been aligned so I'm here again but in today's video I'm gonna be talking about just things that I've learned as a plant parent as a beginner plant parent at that too things that somebody who is thinking of getting into plant parenting can use can be useful but first remember to like comment share and subscribe that's how I know that you like my stuff. Enough said. So far, like I started this planting last year. I bought my first snake plant sometime last year and she died. Cordelia. I think I overwatered her. She was suffering from root rot. Because a snake plant is supposed to be the easiest plant to care for. You don't have to buy plants. I did buy my first ever plant that I own, Cordelia, because I didn't know that propagation was a thing and I didn't know it was so easy. I would recommend to anybody who wants to start the plant parent journey but you don't want to spend all that money on plants, you can just propagate a plant depending on the type of plant you want to pro propagate. Another benefit of plant propagation that I didn't say in the video is that it gives you room to make a lot of mistakes. So even if you have managed to get the plants to create or develop roots and then you're ready to transfer it to either soil or keep it in water, sometimes things can happen where they don't make it during that transitional period and you have the space to try again because you can always propagate again. A lot of plants can be propagated through water propagation. I can also show you guys like an easy way to propagate golden pothos, which is what I primarily have from like a, a more mature plant. But you can also apply the same process to like snake plants and I have my Chinese evergreen up their chin. I wish somebody told me that I could have just propagated a plant. But it's like a lot of people don't want that extra work. But I think it's really rewarding to propagate the plant and see it grow from baby. If you don't have plants around your house, you can just like cut from other people's. Do it smart, do it smart. But you don't have to buy plants. Another lesson is growing your plants from scratch. Learn how to appreciate your relationship with your plants because it's, you're seeing them through so many stages. It makes me feel closer to my plants. It's kind of like actually having a child. You've seen them when they were a seed or just a little cutting and then watch them form roots and see them evolve. And I love that entire process. Another lesson I've learned is capillary watering. I'm gonna probably insert like a video of what I'm doing or how I do the capillary watering because that's something that I, I've always seen but I was always wondering how I could do it myself. Yeah, I figured out some watering systems for my plants to prevent it from being overwatered or underwatered. See, I'm a person that's big on frugality and not overspending or saving money where I can. A lot of like Pinterest and TikTok pages will tell you you have to use XYZ for your plant and this type of fertilizer XYZ. No, I'm not saying they're wrong, but I personally improvise with what they suggest. Alright, for example, plant hangers. Plant hangers are pretty popular once you get into the whole plant parent game. And I was gonna buy them until I went on YouTube University and I was just like, yo, how do I make one? Instead, like, do I need to buy it? If I don't have to buy it, I'm not gonna buy it. So I actually looked it up and learned how to macrame a plant hanger and this is this is this is what I did. This is the the macrame plant hanger. And I'll show you guys how it looks on Oscar. This is Oscar. Say hi Oscar. 
And this is Oscar. You know, looking like a snack. This string here that you see is a part of the capillary system I was talking about earlier. Let me know if you want to learn about the capillary system and how to make one of these. Let me know. Let me know in the comments so that I can have content. Another big lesson that plant parenting taught me is to not buy into the aesthetic. Perfect plants, quote unquote. Some people buy their plants just as is and just try to maintain them how they are, which I think is I think is okay, I guess. But I pride myself on being a prop plant parent. So I see them through every stage and they're not stir but the soil is my soil from my house. No artificial or chemical fertilizers or whatever. So understand that your plants aren't always gonna look cute. They're not always gonna be shining out here. Focus on your own journey as a plant parent. I'm not like try to look like how these internet people be looking because they're not showing you when things go wrong some of them big up the ones that do one thing that i must add that's not on my list wipey plants wipey plants don't wipe the leaves because bugs and dirt and some other things could be lingering on the leaves that ain't cute so wipey leaves that's something that i'm actively working on and plants have taught me to be patient because a lot of the times I'm looking at them and I'm like, why won't you grow? Just grow. You've been, you've been looking like this for a while now. Like, grow a leaf or something. You see me? Like, when I forget about the plants for a while, in terms of like, stop thinking about how much they're growing or how much they're not growing, they grow. They're just like, yeah, bitch, I'm on my own time. Like, why are you forcing me to do things that I don't want to do? I don't know if I said this already, but. Another big lesson is that there's no such thing as a perfect plant parent. On social media, don't buy into social media because that's controlled information. There's no such thing as a perfect plant parent. Some leaves will fall off, some bugs might get to your plant, but you just have to do your research. You're doing the best that you can for your plants. It's just like actual parenting. Try your best to work with what you have and give the best care that you can to your child. But in this case, your plant. It's continuous learning continuous learning plants eat what we eat but only certain things when i discovered that coffee and eggshells and banana peels are natural fertilizers for plants i was like fuck yes i was like yo deaf i'ma jump on that i when i just started us i was watching all of these pinterest videos and tiktok videos on fertilizing your plants and fertilizers to buy and i'm like i'm not buying no fertilizer i'm not buying fertilizer i'd rather just use my own shit or some healthy shit because i i'm not i don't know natural fertilizers that add nutrients to the soil and i was like hell yeah so i've been using them ever since i might insert a video with the eggshells in my soil for y'all to see Another lesson that I've learned is that talking to my plants is very therapeutic. It's free therapy because they are alive. Not like in the way we are, but they are alive. Just a free outlet to get what I need to get off my chest and it stays there. But I have heard that certain things that you feed into your plants, like say to them or the energies that you bring towards the plants affects how they grow. I saw this girl on TikTok actually cursing a plant. She had two identical plants and she cursed one of them. She was mean to one and she was nice to one. So I have two of the same plants. Um, this one I'm gonna be nice to, this one I'm going to abuse. So keep in mind, I'm not a plant mom. Obviously these are in cups. They both might die, but it's gonna be fun along the way, hopefully. Hey girl. You're gonna grow up so beautifully and so strong. I love you so much. You're so wonderful. You stupid fucking piece of shit. No one's ever loved you. And I hope you die alone. I thought it was interesting to see if how you talk to your plants really do affect how they grow and the states that they're in. So that's definitely something that I'm interested in. But I, I only say nice things to my plants. I tell them good morning and I give them names so I don't know, but I actually do want to see 
how that turns out and what happens there. The last lesson that I'll share is that not everybody will get it. Plant parenting, people gonna think you're weird, first of all. When you're just starting, you really have to just be committed to what you're doing and genuinely like it. Just know that a lot of people won't get your journey or the whole love that you have for your plants or the bond that you have with your plants because it's real. And I know that there are other people who know what that feels like to have like a relationship with the plants or you know a bond with the plants. So, so that's it guys. Let me know if this video was interesting or helpful in the comment section. Just let me know how you feel about this video. Remember to like this video if you liked it, comment anything from this video that you could relate to any lesson any tips also if you have something some experience from your plant parenthood then share it i would really love to see it and and like learn from somebody else's perspective share this video with somebody who you know who has been thinking about starting whole plant parent thing I do hope you guys enjoy the rest of your week and do take care and see you in the next video. Bye. You know what? Scrap everything before this.